So the FNCS is like the biggest event of every Fortnite season, right? And winning, you know, it takes a combination of personal skill and incredible team play, unrelenting determination. And so to make it to the top of the top, you have to be the best of the best. And in the EU, that's exactly what Janice and the trio did. Bunch of Crunch Army today, we're gonna be going over exactly what Janice and his trio did to push them through some of the best players the EU region had to offer to become the chapter two, season five FNCS champions. Are you guys ready for this? I know I am. Let's get this going. So one of the first things that Janice and his trio do that really ends up leading to success in the most recent FNCS is the fact that he and his trio are just not afraid at all to really fight at pretty much any point in the game. You know, whether it's mid game, you know, the early game or, you know, the end game, it just doesn't matter because Janice and his team, they're just ready to slay out. So throughout the entire session, you know, they often were seen fighting. They would pick up frags before the half and half circle, which really just led them very rarely being in a bad position going into the late game. And so when it comes to the highest level of play, Generally speaking, you know, one of the most challenging things that a player needs to do is really conserve materials and ammo for the later portion of the game. And so in those hectic end games, guys, like you're going to need a ton of materials to conserve your hype, you know, if you're one of the top layers or to just tarp if you're down below. And so you're also going to need a ton of ammo to really just burn through your enemy's materials so you can just really keep pressure on them while you're rotating. And so, you know, the frags that Janice and his trio got in the early game really set them up nicely to get to the end game pretty much every match. You know, they would siphon up mats and health with their frags while also just scooping up all their enemies' ammo. And that wasn't all either, like, because it just seemed like Janice and his trio knew exactly how to go about eliminating basically everybody that just came across in a variety of ways. Usually one person on the squad was carrying a sniper rifle, which they would use to heavily tag the enemy players with body or headshots. When that happened, the rest of their trio would just instantly capitalize, scoring easy limbs. And so a lot of teams are terrified of taking fights in the mid game or early on in the late game because, you know, they're just scared of just alerting the rest of the lobby of their location and then by getting map focused by everybody else who's alive. But that simply just was not the case for Janice and his crew. Not only did they almost always capitalize off of these incredible snipes, but they managed to get, you know, away unscathed almost every single time as well. And this takes exceptional team chemistry and decision making and, you know, definitely is like one of the main aspects of play that really leads to their success. Do you and your team have excellent team play, but you still can't quite manage to break through into the big tournaments? Okay, so all you need to do, guys, is head on over to ProGuys.com so you can take advantage of our incredible VOD review system, which will definitely help you improve fast. You know, all you need to do is really send in your replays, and our team of excellent pro coaches will tell you exactly what you are doing wrong and how you can improve. It's definitely the best way and the fastest way to improve if you don't have the time for a full coaching session. All right, guys, so the next major aspect of Janice and his trio's play that was arguably like one of the biggest factors that went on to determine their success was their ability to get and then maintain height during endgame. So because their resource and ammo situations like was never in shambles due to their quick limbs throughout the rest of the game, you know, they had plenty of resources during the endgame to not just take height, but then, you know, not run out of mats or ammo while actually on top of height. And so this led to them rarely, if ever, needing to force a refresh, allowing them to rack up placement points and eliminations while on height without any worries at all. And so pretty much everybody who plays Fortnite at the top level of competitive, yo, they know that if you manage to get height in the end game, you're probably going to end up with a pretty exceptional placement. Well, that was exactly the case for Janice and his trio, because once they got the height advantage, man, like they did an incredible job of keeping other players off of it. And so they staggered layers and managed to secure eliminations later on in the game, which did wonders for their tournament points when you combine it with their first place finishes. Once again, it was primarily their team playability and overall their player chemistry that really allowed them to get and really keep hype in a large portion of their games, which led them outright to win many matches as well as placing extremely well in the games that they didn't win. Okay, so as we mentioned before, like one of the things that Genesis Trio's team does incredibly well is really team play. I mean, I can't say it enough. 
It's honestly, it's just a sight to behold. You know, because of that incredible level of team play, they were able to coordinate 3v1s against their opponents consistently and with ease. And so one of the most daunting aspects of trios really is the fact that unlike any of the other modes in competitive, having a numbers advantage is something that will seriously put you at an extreme advantage. Like being able to isolate enemy players and then just fight them 3v1 is probably one of the most important aspects when it comes to not only getting refreshes, but being successful in the trios mode in general. And so the level of team play that Janice and the rest of his trio displayed in the FNCS last season led to multiple refreshes for Janice and his crew. And it was just a major factor in the games when they didn't manage to come into the end game scenarios with hype. And so in the situations when a refresh was needed or when a team fight broke out, it was just more often than not that Janice and his trio managed to isolate one player on the enemy team and then eliminate them like quickly. And so when it comes to Fortnite, like one of the things that you really want to focus on, guys, is really honing in on your, you know, your time to kill. Like having a fast time to kill is essential in team modes since third party situations are so frequent. Janice and his trio were able to, you know, not only isolate players, but then eliminate them in an incredibly fast manner, which allowed them to not only get constant refreshes, but they also racked up elimination points while very rarely getting third party. All right, bunch of Chris Army, it's time for the question of the day. Okay, so who do you think is going to manage to win the FNCS this season? You know, the game has changed just a whole lot. So who do you think is going to end up on top? Let us know in the comments down below because as you know we check out every single one of them. All right, back to the video. The final thing that Janice and his trio did that allowed them to win the most recent EU, you know, FNCS was their decision to always avoid the mid-ground layers in in-game scenarios. You know, anybody who plays Fortnite competitively, yo, they're gonna understand the challenges of playing in the mid-ground. Like, you have to regularly change your layers, you have to be worried about being the one in second height, and since you're in the middle of all the action, you have to worry about, you know, whether someone is just going to hop straight into your box at, like, a random time from a random direction. And so all of this makes playing the mid-ground layers incredibly challenging in the late game because, you know, there's just so many more things that you have to pay attention to every single second. And so while we were reviewing Janice's gameplay, you know, one of the major things that really stuck out to us was the fact that he and his trio avoided the mid-ground layers at all costs. Like, they pretty much were never there. And so what this means, guys, is that, you know, anytime Janice and his crew didn't have height, they were always just playing at the ultimate low ground. And this strategy proved to be extremely successful for Janice. You know, anytime that they were forced down into the ultimate low ground position, they managed to absolutely dominate it. Now, sure, like they didn't manage to walk away with the win in every game. I get it, especially not the ones where they, you know, had to really play from the low ground position, but their ability to regularly frag out to get constant refreshes alongside playing together, well, it allowed them to make it very high up in the placements and basically all of their games. And so when you break it down, like this, you know, it's pretty clear to see that overall Janice and his crew can basically do it all. Like they can take and play from height with ease and, you know, they can take any team in a fight and then just finish them off quickly. But they can also dominate from the low ground too. Honestly, it's really no surprise that they won the EU Trios FNCS while being able to play this well. All right, bunch of crunch, Sami. It's time to do this recap. Here we go. First of all, <laughs> Janice and his trio were never afraid to take fights early on in the end game. Like this allowed them to rarely, if ever, go into the late game with low levels of ammo or materials, which really set them up for the rest of the end game. All right, next up, he and his trio were just regularly able to take and keep hype, which allowed them to go deep into games and obviously rack up tons of placement points. Thirdly, while fighting, you know, they were able to regularly just isolate a single opponent and then eliminate them very quickly. And so this incredibly fast time to kill really just led them rarely getting third party. And finally, Janice and his trio avoided the mid-ground layers in the late game. And so, you know, this led to them either being able to play from height or sit on the low ground. And so both of these are positions of safety and power, which really allowed them to frag out and make it even deeper into their games. All right, so what do you guys think, Bunch of Crunch Tommy? Is Janice the real deal? You know, one thing I know is true is Janice and his boys looked absolutely unbeatable in the last year of FNCS, but do you think they can go back to back? Hmm. Let us know in the comments down below. If you guys liked the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and listen, if you want some extra motivation, connect to me on my Instagram at your motivation guy. I'm so proud of you guys. You better never give up. You better go after your dreams. Man, I'll see you soon. Peace.